All right, guys, welcome back to Southeastern 14 with Max Barr. Once again, we continue our SEC basketball team previews for the 23-24 season on to the Florida Gators. Before we get there, as always, if you want to advertise or sponsor here on the channel, our basketball content, anything else, football, baseball, you can do that by reaching out to caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. Uh, get your product or service advertised here on the channel. So let's talk about the Gators, Max, because this is a team, Todd Golden, entering his second season. And, you know, have some guys to replace, specifically one big guy in Colin Castleton. Uh, but they also have some guys returning and some guy newcomers as well uh, that should really give them a boost in certain areas. Uh, but if we kind of look at it overall, I mean, I, I said after last season, I think you'd have to consider it a disappointing year uh, overall, just based on um, having a Castleton on the roster. Of course, he got injured at the end of the year. We know there's nothing the staff can do about that. Um, but. I think they felt like they wanted to maybe get a little bit further, uh, perhaps overall with that team last year, given where everything was at. But I think now, you know, you get beyond that, you kind of see what worked and what didn't work um, a season ago, and you've rebuilt the roster to really try to improve some of those areas. We know size is one of those. Um, when you just look at the guys they've added to the mix, um, a lot of a lot of big guys coming into it here. But um, I guess for you, as you look at Todd Golden, um, here is the the head coach of the Florida Gators one year in. Um, what are we looking for the most maybe from this Florida team here as we get ready for year two? Yeah, I mean, I was I was expecting a pretty big year last year out of Florida. I really liked the roster. I really liked Todd Golden. He's a young coach. Um, and I was, like a lot of Gators fans, disappointed that they didn't make the tournament. Um, I think this year it's it's got to be a tournament team. You got to make that tournament um, with the guys that they they brought in. Um, very disappointed that uh, Edge Jarvis, EJ Jarvis from Yale, is uh, stepping away from the game. I hope he, I hope he figure figures out what he's what he's got going on in his personal life. Um, but man, that uh that stretch four was going to be a nice little component of this team that now there's a little bit of a uh, uncertainty with. Um, but still, I mean. We've talked uh, this offseason about the shooting. You kind of mentioned the big guys bringing in Hen Lokton and Samuel, but, man, I am excited for this offense. This offense, if he if Golden does it right, this offense can really like be like one of the best offenses in the nation, I think. I compare this team a lot to last year's Miami, where you have a lot of those guards that are like – 40% three-point shooters, not like 32, 33, where they can knock down an open shot. Like they've got some knockdown guys. I'm really excited for this offense. Yeah. I I think, you know, you're putting it kind of in the context of all right, this is a team that was clearly, I think when Castleton went out, he missed the final, oh man, what was it? Final seven games, I think, last year. Um three weeks. You know, yeah, I mean, at that point. They were like 14 and 12, I believe, seven and six in the SEC. Felt like they were getting kind of in that that bubble range. Like you felt like they had an opportunity, you know, to get there at that point. But, you know, it just didn't turn out that way. And so, again, I don't put all that on the staff because, I mean, the Castleton injury just kind of changed everything for sure because the only two teams they beat after it were LSU and Georgia, who, as we know, were, you know, two of the worst teams in the league. So, um, but overall, I I'm with you. I thought that that was a team that, probably had high expectations and, you know, yet certain guys maybe fit a little bit better than others in the way Todd Golden wanted to play right off the bat. But now I think he's got the roster that should be able to fit exactly how they want to play. And, um, you know, again, that's a luxury of kind of this era. You can kind of do it transfer wise. And I think they got the guys overall. And specifically, I think when you look at it from the backcourt standpoint, there is a lot to like about this team and, you know, options and depth, they do not lack, I think, going into the season. Riley Kugel, who we know, um, you know, <laughs> we named one of the best at his position heading into the SEC, heading into this SEC season. Uh, he returns, averaged pretty much 18 points per game in the final stretch there. I think final seven, eight games, something like that was just, I mean, he was shooting it from everywhere. He was making shots consistently. He shot 41% from three in that stretch. Um, remember, He's just a freshman. <laughs> like, so now you get him with an added year of experience, ready to go here. Um, wow. I just think about the sophomore jump before we even get into anyone else. I feel like you have to start with him because 
this guy, you know, someone asked me kind of my thoughts on the all SEC teams and all that heading into the season. I said, well, I can get to tell you right now, like he's got to be on there somewhere, like no matter what, you know, beyond maybe a certain number. Sure. You're going to pick a few guys ahead of him. Uh, I think maybe, I don't know exactly the number, but he's going to, he should be an all SEC player heading into the season. Cause I think he could be that good. So. Yeah. We're all aboard the Google train. hundred hundred percent. Um, He's going to be the he's going to be the focus of the offense, but I think he's going to be even better than he was last year because of the spacing that he's going to have now. You've seen like when a guy is on a college team with no spacing, and then they go to the NBA, and there's a little bit of spacing. They just like their their offense is just amazing. They're like, look at what spacing can do for a player. I think that's what we're going to see here with 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 Kugel because you bring on Walter Clay in, who shot over forty percent from three, one of the probably my opinion, him or Tyler Perry of uh, Kansas State would be the best three-point shooting point guards in the in the country. Maybe Ashworth at Creighton also, but Clayton is is up there, like best three-point shooting point guards in the country. Um, and then you got Will Richard, who just does not get talked about. I'm talking about him, but I don't know who else is talking about him. Forty uh, percent from three. Uh, so just your three starting guards are going to be 40% three-point shooters. And then if you do start Zion Pullen also, he's also 40%. So the spacing is going to be unbelievable, um, which is also going to open up driving lanes, of course. But one thing that I like about this backcourt, and it kind of reminds me of how Florida Atlantic plays their backcourt, is you have Kugel at 6'5", 2'10", and Will Richard at 6'5", 2'10" who could play that small ball four. Um, now, they wouldn't be playing the four, like, offensively, but, you know, when they're on defense, Will Richard can can guard a can guard a, a four. Um, so I'm, I'm very curious to see if if Golden runs out like a, a Walter Clayton, Zion Pullen, Riley Kugel, and Will Richard, then with just one of the big guys. Oh, I would, I would love that. <laughs> I, I would be dreaming about an offense like that. He might not do that, but man, I'm excited for this backcourt. I don't, I don't know that it's. I think it's something you'll have to do at times. Quite frankly, um, I hope. I hope. And, and we'll kind of get into the front court and say I think there are going to be times where that is something he has to do, um, depending on the situation. But yeah, like you said, I mean, you go beyond Kugel, who uh, to me is an All SEC player to start the season. You got Richard returning. I mean, you know, really good three point shooter. Um, that was something else I think last year when you looked at that team, maybe expect a little bit more overall. I mean, they only shot 31.4% from three, um, you know, that was 313th nationally, um, which, you know, which wasn't very good. And so, uh, that was the problem is offensively, you just felt like that was a team that just could not get anything going at times. And it was surprising, but I don't think they're going to have a problem this year doing that with Kugel, with Will Richard. Um, you know, he was very effective, you know, just in terms of his percentages and such, but then adding a Clayton to the mix, you know, comes over as the player of the year in that conference coming from Iona. Um, I mean, just a prolific kind of score in terms of like the the numbers, right? Um, shot, what was it, 95% from the free throw line, uh, 43% from three. And so stuffed the stat sheet for Rick Patino there at Iona uh, and now comes over, should be able to give them a huge boost, I think, offensively just from a consistency standpoint. He'll make plays uh, for everybody. I think that really helps too. And so then you got Zion Pullen, um, you know, UC Riverside played for Mike McPio there. And I think just the style of play that they played was something that, you know, to me is going to mesh pretty well with how Todd Golden wants to play. Um, and he was someone else that was pretty effective in terms of when he had the ball in his hands, things he could do, he could make shots from outside. Um, and so I, I think what you have here. Whereas it felt like last year at times when you, you know, you found yourself in those scenarios where we got to have a basket, right? Mm. I mean, it was probably like hope for Riley, Riley Google to make a play, hope that Will Richard can find an open shot or maybe try to do something with Colin Castleton. But like, it never felt like it just depended. Like you feel like you had one guy for this, one guy for that, one guy for that. This year, I think you, even if you just stop at the backcourt, like you've got to me four guys right there that you feel like can give you that basket if you're in that situation. And so I think that's the luxury just in the depth standpoint. I think all four of these guys play significant minutes this year. And like you said, I would not be surprised 
if we see him on the floor at the same time in some of these scenarios, because I think it may be too tempting not to try it out against teams that, you know, maybe aren't sporting a, a seven, five, like a Jamarian sharp roll miss and such. You, you may not be able to do that in those scenarios, but um, th- there will be options, I think, for them to do it. Yeah. I just, I compare them to FAU and Miami of last year. I think it's going to, I think that's the type of team you're going to see. Um, super fun to watch. Place your money on the over and just enjoy a game. <laughs> that's you <laughs> yes. know that's gonna that's gonna be Florida basketball. Yeah. Um, all right, front court. So the the Jarvis exit to me is just a it's a blow. Like it, yeah, because depth I think is not that I don't like the pieces they have. I mean they add Micah and Lockton from Marshall, seven foot one, Sun Belt freshman of the year. Um, someone else that <laughs> percentages don't lie in terms of just how efficient he was there um blocked a lot of shots so look i'm not not saying he's colin castleton but like he fits the mold of what some of the things that colin castleton did and so you're hoping that that he can come over and kind of translate to that now i know just in kind of reading some of the stuff out there um you know looking at blue ribbon one of the quotes todd golden had in there you know needs to get stronger and so that is something that can maybe concern you a little bit because it is the sec and we know there are players like Janai Broom. There are players like Talu Smith. There, you know, and and so forth in this league that really hard to kind of you know battle against night in and night out. Um, so so yes, that is something that you just kind of wonder exactly what that transition's like. Then you've got Tyree Sandmu. I have no issues and, or no concerns about handling that because he he played the Big East and so he's used to the physicality. I think so. That is, I think, a, a nice bonus to have is someone coming from the Big East was there for four seasons. Um, basically a double double guy down the stretch for them. I really like Samuel, and I think he is someone that to me will wind up being kind of an invaluable piece on this team because of the experience, because he's used to a league that let's call it what it is. There's gonna be lots of fouls, there's gonna be lots of you know, bumping, and, and like that's just the SEC. That's the style that we see a lot of plays at the rim. Um, and so I think Samuel will be pretty well equipped or will well equipped to handle that. Uh, I think in these kind of situations. So, but look, that's where to me, it's like, Hey, beyond that, yeah, you've got a couple guys, whether it's Condon, the guy from, you know, he's from Perth. Um, I think he'll be able to help him with some rim protection and all that. Um, Thomas Hall is there too, but uh, the Jarvis one, if you just added Jarvis on this team, I'd be like, Oh man, this Florida team, look out. Like they, they might win the league this year if all goes according to plan, but it's like just that one extra guy I feel like on paper would be huge for this team. And without him, I don't know. You're, you're asking a lot, I think, right away from the front court. Yeah, it's such a big blow. I so did, I was I feel for him. I feel for him because he's probably doing the right thing for his mental health and whatnot. But man, I just was really excited about this team. And I, I still am. I still am. You know, they still got yeah. they still got promise. I like how you you really highlighted Tyree Samuel because I personally think he's gonna be the starter. I think I think he's the guy there that's gonna man the front court. Um I've actually been watching a few uh highlights from just like Florida scrimmages and Florida practices and whatnot. And Samuel's been stepping out and making threes. Um he didn't do a lot of that at Seton Hall, but he's capable now. I I he looks good when he's doing it. Um, I don't know if Golden's going to give him that green light in the games or whatnot, but I think Samuel's going to be the guy um, over Henloked and just just to start based on the experience. And you you named it with the Big East. He's guarded Sonogo, Klingon, Kalkbrenner, you name it. He's matched up against them and put up numbers. Um, he's he's not just like a uh, just I'll, I'll guard the rim and I'll get you a rebound here and there. He, he puts up he stuffs a stat sheet. He's, he's pretty yeah. active offensively as well. So yeah, Tyrese Samuel is going to be the guy there. But man, I mean, it's going to be it's going to come down to either Hall or Condon. What what one of those freshmen can step up and and play a lot better than they were you know they were ranked coming out of high school. I mean, Hall was a three star. Condon was unranked, but Condon you know international. I don't know what we're going to get from them. I, I've watched both of their highlight tapes and. Like most freshmen, they look highlights look good. Uh, I, I haven't didn't watch the lowlights, but the highlights look decent. Um, I think right now, uh, Florida Basketball Hour was uh, reporting that Thomas Haw was taking the the reps with the the first squad at the four, but I'm just not sure what we're gonna see 
That's my only question mark on this team is, is what are we getting at that power forward position? I just don't yeah. know. Yeah, and keep in mind, Alex Simsic, I mean, he broke his foot. What was that? Yep. Several weeks ago, I think he's expected to be out two or three months. Yeah, he's going to um, be out. So, I mean, you know, again, that's something else, too. I mean, he played a little bit last year after Castleton's injury. So, you know, 6'10", so he's an option, um, you know, if the development's there. But, you know, not it's not great in terms of, like we said, he's going to be out probably at least a couple more months um, at this point. So, if you get him back for SEC play, maybe he kind of, you know, slides into giving you some minutes there, too. But, yeah, there, it's a question. I think at this point it's a, um, it's a fair question to ask exactly how this thing um, – unfolds just from a rotation standpoint in the front court. So I really like Samuel. I think Ken Logden, like I said, can be a good guy to come in and replace some of the things that Castleton did. Uh, but I just tend to think Samuel's the guy that has the better, maybe the quicker adjustment period to the SEC, just based on you know the things we talked about. So we'll see what happens in the front court uh, with the Gators. But all right, let's talk about our X-Factors and team MVPs. If we start with the X-Factors, I'll just pick up right where I left off. I think it's Han Logdon. I think that to me, he's the one that, you know, like I said, I, I think he has to be, he has to be good. If I think this Florida team is going to be one that can challenge near the top of the sec or something like that, because I don't really have a lot of questions about the, the backcourt and the perimeter play on this team or the scoring, which, you know, is a little bit different than last year. There was a lot of questions about the consistent scoring. I don't have a lot of that this year. I'd be surprised if any of those four guys we mentioned in the, on the wing backcourt and such, I'd be surprised if those guys aren't putting up points um, this season, whether it's, you know, that, that combination of Kugel and Richard, I think they absolutely will. I don't see a huge transition in terms of like, I'm worried about a Clayton or worried about a pull. And I just think their games are really good. And I think they'll fit into how golden wants to play and they'll put him in the right position, put them in the right position to succeed. But it's hand logged into me because he's the seven foot, seven foot one guy on a front court that maybe lacks a little bit of depth. And so, um, I'll go him as the X factor here. They they really need him to be to be good, and quite frankly, they they probably need him to be pretty good, you know, early on, especially before they they get into the grind of that SEC schedule. Yeah, I was also going to do Hen Lowton as my X factor just because of the the front court depth that's not there. He's really going to have to be forced into action early, but just for the sake of covering the team, I'm going to go with another guy that I really like, Will Richard. Um, just if you if you watch like a full game of of Florida from last year in SEC play, Will Richard, and you and you're really looking for what Richard's doing, you're like, this guy's great. Yeah. His his perimeter defense is is really good. Um, and then he'll space the floor. Also, he likes to find little spots on the wing and whatnot. Um, but the reason that I like him as an X factor for this team is just because of the potential now that Florida's going to have to play a little bit more small ball. And if you're going to play a little bit more small ball, those bigger guards are going to be forced into a role with a little bit more physicality on defense. He's probably going to be guarding the four. So, like, say you're going against an Ole Miss team. Will Richard was going to have to be forced to guard Jamin Brakefield, you know, something like that, where he's strong enough and athletic enough to handle that matchup. Is is Riley Kugel, you know, that defender? Is Zion Pullen? I don't know. So, the, the main thing that I'm trying to get at is if Florida is forced to play small, which they will they will be to start because they don't have Jarvis anymore, Richard is going to be that bigger guard that takes on that main defensive role. That's why he's my X factor. I really think that in a, in a flashy offense, that wing that those you know key defenders can now just get lost in the wash. You're just talking about the offense so much, we don't really keep up with the defense. But Will Richard might really tie this whole thing together. Team MVP. Anyone other than Riley Kugel? Come on. Come on. Listen, I'll go I'll go Riley Kugel's the pick, but I think Walter Clayton could wind up being someone that Ooh, um okay. I wouldn't be shocked if we put if he's right there with a chance, even beyond the two guys that returning that I would expect them to, to lead a this Florida team in scoring, Kugel and Richard. But I'm really excited about Clayton. I think he's he could be right in the mix, but yeah, Riley Kugel's the only choice for me here. Yeah, I mean, it's I I think Riley Kugel, if 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 and when we do our uh, our our SEC ballots for the preseason, we'll do that next. We may do that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think you know where Kugel will be on mine. <laughs> he's he's gonna be up there. Uh, I think I don't think there's a better scoring guard um, in the conference. It's he's he's gonna put up 15 plus a game. Um, 
So yeah, Kugel. But if I had to go with a different one, I think it'd be Tyree Samuel because yeah. I think he's going to be need to be like a 35 minute game guy to start out. Like they're going to need everything and more from Tyree Samuel. So yeah. I think MVP of the whole team, though, if we're looking like MVP of the team is this backcourt. I just, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to watch I'm going to watch Florida games just to to watch this backcourt fly. I'm so excited for it. All right. Now to our predictions for the Florida Gators for the 23-24 season. This is a very interesting team to me. And if we start schedule-wise, um, you know, they – you want to talk about jumping right into things. They play Virginia in game number two, which um, if you want to kind of see offensively what this team could do, going up against Virginia uh, and Charlotte could be a, an interesting start to that. Of course, they got a game against Florida State. They're in the NIT season tip-off. They'll play Pitt, and they'll play either Baylor or Oregon State there. Um, I feel like Florida and Baylor somehow find a way to play each other uh, at least once every two years or so, whether it was the SEC Big 12 Challenge or just random games like this. But they got to go to Wake Forest in the ACC SEC Challenge, um, play Richmond. Uh, they play Michigan. That's all non conference wise. But here is what I was getting to. Look at the start to their SEC schedule. Play Kentucky at home. They're at Ole Miss, home against Arkansas, at Tennessee, at Missouri home against Mississippi State. That is a pretty brutal six-game stretch to start SEC play, um, given what we know yeah. about all those teams. And I think we previewed all of those teams at this point, except for Mississippi State. So if you want our thoughts on those first five, Kentucky, Ole Miss, Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, preview should be up, or Mississippi State preview may be up by the time you're watching this one. Um, you know, and if you even go beyond that, Max, they got road trips to Kentucky, Texas A&M, Alabama. Um, they get Alabama again. They get Missouri again. Um, you know, it's not an easy slate for this Florida team. I say all that to say this. I think the ceiling and the floor, as we talk about with these teams, I think Florida's ceiling is probably like a, I don't know, a fourth, fifth place finish, something like that. I don't know if that's fair because I just think there are several of those teams ahead of them, which we'll talk about when we do our preseason rankings that I just, compare rosters and don't know if this team gets to that level. Um, and I'd be surprised if those teams finish that much lower. Uh, and look, I mean, to me, we're talking about teams like Tennessee, Arkansas, A&M, um, maybe Kentucky, uh, maybe Alabama and so forth. Right. So I think you're kind of, I would put Florida on the outside of that group right now, just because of, I think on paper, what I see on the roster. Now the floor for this team, I, I don't see it being, like you said, I think they have to make the tournament. I think they're a, I think they're a bubble team or better. I'll say that. Like I, th I feel like because I look, I look at like the bottom half of the league. This is where again you're looking at like I don't see Florida in the bottom half with some of those teams. I think this roster is better than than most of those teams down there in terms of like if you played it nine times out of ten, I just don't think they finish, you know, in that bottom four or five in the league. I just don't see it happening. Um, I think this roster is too good. I think Kugel's a star. We talked about all the other things we like about him. Um, if the front court doesn't pan out, then yes, maybe you got some legitimate concerns that could send them a little further down than you think. But I still think as low, maybe as like a, I don't know, eight, nine, something like that in the SEC. So I don't know that they have a wide range, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because I feel like you kind of know what to expect from this team. And I think they're going to be better than they were last year. It's just always the problem of who do you jump? Um, and I just think there are a lot of teams still probably a little further ahead right now um, that it's going to be hard to jump for this team, even if they are much improved. So, yeah, I, I may say four to four to eight ish for Florida. But again, if, if that's your range, you're probably in the NCAA tournament conversation in any way, shape or form there, even if it's just like a, you know, bubble team that gets a 10 seed, something like that, if that's considered the floor. So I, I'll go four to eight, maybe nine, something like that. I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, just quick touch on the schedule. That Virginia game, whenever that line drops, I don't care what it is, bet the over. Bet the over. <laughs> Always. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be really low. It, this offense is going to be so spread out, and there's going to be so many shooters. The front court is not going to be that dominant for either of these teams. Bet the over on that game. Just I'll start with that. Do it now. Um, Find a line right now and bet that at this very moment. I would do it right now. Um, so moving on to, to where, where I kind of think they're going to finish. 
Uh, if they had Jarvis, that really ties the whole roster together, I think, kind of connecting Tyree Samuel and Hang Lokton to these 40% shooting guards. You kind of tie into all of it. So if Hall and Condon really step up and it's like, wow, well, geez, maybe, you know, did, did Jarvis leave because maybe the role that he was promised wasn't there with these, you know, who knows, who knows, but say that departure of Jarvis isn't as bad as we think it is right now. I think you can see him right around four to six, three, maybe even three, if they really outperform expectations. I think this is going to be kind of like a Miami season from last year where you're going to have to score like 80 points, you know, seven, high 70s to beat this team because you know they're going to score. Kind of yeah. like Mizzou, kind of like Mizzou last year. Um, you're going to have to score on this team. Um, but say that that departure of Jarvis is pretty big and Haw and Condon are way behind and just the front court's kind of getting eaten up when, when Samuel's not out there and stuff like that. And they're, you know, maybe Poland doesn't shoot 40% or, you know, some, you know, the shooting's not there. I think it's still a bubble team. I yeah. I just can't see how br- the amount of guys they brought in, the shooting they brought in, bringing in Tyree Samuel. Last year they barely missed, and they had a bunch of injuries and couldn't shoot worth anything. I can't see how this team's worse than last year. I, I can't see it. So I'd say this is kind of like a pretty wide range for me. I'd say if if they're firing on all cylinders and you're like, oh, my gosh, like – these guys got some shooters and they're just going to shoot the lights out. Yeah. This team could be like fourth in the SEC. Um, but it, it's not, I see him down near like eight, nine, 10. Yeah. That's, that, I think we're on the same page there in terms of what we could see from this team. And I just, I think they flipped the script in terms of there'll be a much better shooting team. Um, they've got more overall size, both front court and back court. I think if you just want, you know, from top to bottom, I think there's just more size there. Now, of course, you had a Castleton, but and logged in seven one. As we said, they got a big backcourt group, all those guards, pretty good size. Um, so I think that to me raises the ceiling a little bit too, just in terms of the overall makeup of the roster. But yeah, I think they're uh, better than last year. I'll put it at that. There you go. I'm I'm with you. I think they're a better team than last year. It's just as always, you can be a better team and still not make a huge jump in the SEC just because of everybody else that's around you. So um, yeah, so we'll see what happens, but, uh, that's our thoughts on the Florida Gators for the 23, 24 season. We are previewing every team in sec basketball, heading into the new college basketball season. So be sure to that subscribe button, hit the like button to check out all of our stuff here on the channel. Again, if you want to advertise or sponsor any of our content or shows, you can do that by reaching out to caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. Um, and we'll have more team previews on the way. So hit that subscribe button. Thanks as always for watching. And we will talk to you again here soon at southeastern14.